Hey, what is up? Welcome back to Science Squad. And in this video, I'm going to share something super powerful, something what I learned working with data sciences back in the day on some of the really hardcore experience design efforts and crafting new AI and machine learning powered services and products. With enough of data processing power, we can already process so many different human decisions and inputs and replicate that so that we can automate more processes. And this tool is going to be exactly about that. You as a UX designer then can work together with data scientists, product managers in order to map the existing human decision journeys, the trail of different decisions and how they make those decisions. And let me show you an example without waffling too much. On my screen right now, you can see this fuzzy cognitive map. And this is exactly almost like a buildup of a normal cognitive mapping effort in UX research meant to replicate and capture how do humans make decisions and then add relative ratings to inform the machine learning this is all fake dummy data, by the way, but it's representative of some of the decisions and inputs users would take in, let's say, taxi, cab, fleet management, businesses, general transport management. And so you would have some sort of level of human decision down below where you could make key decisions every day, let's say, as a transport manager. You would have some sort of intermediate outcomes of what was decisions would result in. And you would have the final outcomes, which are basically the business outcomes, which could be expressed as the cost, revenues, and the safety, for example, if that's what you care, like safety for passengers, safety for the drivers itself on a fleet. But how do you arrive at those things, which is something what let's say a business would want to investigate and replicate is really run a workshop with your users, let's say, get on a whiteboard and literally ask them to walk you through how do they make the decisions which are key to their activities every single day and form that trail of the different decisions and how they permeate from the key first interaction up until the end, which results in the cost or revenue or safety or any other metric, which is key important to the business. In this specific example, we know that our managers in the transport always set, let's say, in their systems in the spreadsheets or the apps, what's the interval for rides? Like how often do cabs go? What's the length of the cab journey? What are the operating hours overall? What's the potential maximum demand? So is it thousands of customers we need to serve today or something? And they would, let's say, calculate and crunch those numbers, right? What's the fleet capacity? What's the price per trip? Is it one pound? Is it 20 pound? Is a, is a pound a mile or something? And what's the competition price? And this is, of course, fictitious. But now, if I run a workshop with my transport managers, they can tell me that these are the things they do every day. And then those are resulting in this intermediate outcomes, which are journey length, number of caps, mileage per week, schedule, punctuality, things of that nature. And then you can just rearrange around in a working session to understand better what it is. In reality, you're going to end up with a lot of different themes until you can separate them from decisions, which are actually actionable bits into intermediate steps and then the outcomes. I usually do and start with the outcomes and work backwards. So almost this middle layer fills in afterwards and it could take you a variety of different sessions to arrive to this conclusion and to kind of separate it and filter it out as you can see there are several bands until it arrives at that actual conclusion but let's follow the trail of this user so what they are saying and what's the result here is that if let's say they would increase operating hours as you can see there is a lot of different trails saying that the operating hours directly affect potential passenger demand. So if let's say you decrease operating hours, the demand might go lower. That does make sense, right? And if you take another one, let's say mileage per week, if you increase the operating hours, the mileage per week is going to go up. And naturally, if the mileage goes up, then the cost would go up, then the safety would go up, then the revenue would probably go down, things of that nature. So you map that trail whatever the users are doing in their day to days result in something. If you can map it, if you can then as a result, add some sort of confidence marker, which is relative, as you can see, there is a lot of different numbers here. You don't have to know all of it. But if I would take something simple like this, for example, root length, and how long is the route connecting to the journey length, 
connecting in in the user's mind, connecting to the mileage per week, connecting to where is that long trail leads us to potential passenger demand. And so what these green lines in this diagram means is that if you increase this action from the user, it could be like a lever, let's say in the UI, maybe it's a slider where your users is going to adjust the length of how long is, you know, the route, for example, for a cab or a fleet as a whole, you define it, your user defines it, they give you that information, you map it out, and you make it as a fact, which then informs other design decisions, let's say. So once you're done with that, you can then, you know, craft your UIs and form the data scientists to form their machine learning algorithms, play with that, make new experiments to adjust these cases. You can see on my screen is something what users told us. So for example, they are saying that route length increase if they just play with that lever and increase from 10 to 20, it's going to be 100 it could be 100% or a thousand points or 100 points, but it means that it's 100 worth of relative score, which increases the journey length. It means it's direct uh, permeation of that, right? So I could even add 100% for the clarity, but it's up to you and the data science to define what exactly you're tracking here. Then if we compare 100 to 30, means that it's only one third as strong that decision which permeates into mileage per week because it could vary that much and this is let's say 60 percent and again this is for just for your clarity clear confidence for you and your team what exactly that increase or decrease if i would let's say make this in red and maybe make it minus 60 let's say or something like that then i would know that increase of this would result in decrease of average journey time and just to show you a simple example of what they mean and how to connect the dots here imagine that i just literally started and i'm working with other youtube creators or content creators or teachers on youtube and i'm just saying hey can you walk me through a process of how do you make your decisions when you craft or film YouTube videos. And imagine that we talk about actual YouTube production only. So it's all about those metrics which we care about, which could be, let's say, view duration, something we cannot affect directly. You couldn't just say, click a button and say, oh, now my viewers are viewing 10 minutes instead of five minutes. Add revenue, let's say views, then subscribers. So these are, let's say, my KPIs. This is at me as a sole creator, as a business I care about, as a human being. Now I, as a UX designer on a side, would go and ask them to talk to me exactly how do they get to these how do they ensure those key performance indicators every day as they create the videos i can guarantee for example that views could be directly affected with the intermediate step which could be let's say a thumbnail quality but for thumbnail quality you really need to spend time say research time or Photoshop editing time, whatever tool that creator is going to use, which could be expressed, let's say in production time as a whole. And then maybe these two things, these two actions I would take, which is basically spending extra time would that influence the quality of a thumbnail and then would result in views. And then off of back, you know, once you map enough of these type of fuzzy cognitive bits, the segments, the connection points, you can then ask them, how much does that really affect your views? Because I could also say that production time does not only increase the thumbnail quality, but also video quality and everything else. There's just so many different bits, which you as a human process in your head when you make these decisions. So it could be like that, for example, and then it could be that it, it, it video quality increases the views, the ad revenue, the duration, and then maybe even the subscriber count, right? But then you can add ask them why is it like that maybe there's too many ways because i would also question that view duration is really the intermediate lever which leads to ad revenue like so and then you could really delete that connection and you kind of build up that map as an onion you build it up basically layer by layer but you work together with your users to map it out once you add some sort of measures to it that let's say view duration is directly influencing the ad revenue let's say so i would just add 100 let's say or i could add a thousand and based off of that then relatively i could say that video quality could increase duration as a human that's what i think that's what we're capturing it doesn't have to be factual that let's say increases hmm, let's say compared to 80 something right compared from 100 this could be 80 now 
Once we capture all of that, we can then feed that information and craft our experiments in data science and craft the machine learning algorithms the way so that it's proven. As you produce your UIs, which let's say are gonna have the levers and allow your users to increase or decrease operating hours, increase or decrease max, demand and potentially in that product itself these levers are going to be then informing how the data is connected you can also learn from what your users do over time and adjust those confidence markers perhaps whatever your user said in your workshops is not really the connection which leads to this exact intermediate step but to actually that and then the system and adapt and then make better decisions in the end machine learning and resulting ai would be like and this is only the introduction to the fuzzy cognitive map. What you really need to do is start applying it, playing around with it like any UX technique. Just take what I told you, try to apply to one of the issues, try to work with your team, especially data guys. Those guys are crazy about it. And if you can bring that human centricity to them, you can then achieve much more meaningful outcomes because your designs, your ideas are going to be directly influenced of what exactly your users go through, what we think as a users, as humans, and that can be reflected in the end product. Leave a comment down below if you have any other techniques to design for human centered apps, decision support, machine learning, AI, you name it. And on that note, I'll see you next time.